everyone. Welcome back to Whiskey Raising. Today's day we're going to start the header project on the Challenger. Uh, these things have been soaking in penetrating oil for about a week now. They come out every day, spray them down. I think they've been on the car for about 30 years. So this should be fun, but we're going to start with the collector bolts and then uh, move to the top and uh, see how bad this really is. Starting under the car here, I just put my wrench on there to see if it's the right size, and it is. And that is coming right off, actually. Let's hope they're all this easy. All right, so we're moving on to the passenger side. As you can see, this is this side probably has more patches than an Eagle Scout, but uh, definitely time to change these headers. So we're starting on the driver's side here. Um, I got the nut off there, nut off there. Uh, I've literally had these soaking for probably two weeks or better in a PV blaster. And I did start the car up because you know you have to hear an open header. Um, but uh, yeah, so they're coming off easier than I thought. Um, I think that's the only one I'm not gonna be able to get a ratchet wrench on. So I'm, I'm glad I have ratchet wrenches for this. So, all right, let's keep front bolt on a big block Mopar goes into a coolant jacket so we're just draining the block while we're at it as well need to change the coolant anyway looks pretty clean though all right so we're down to one bolt right there obviously just taking that off of the regular wrench not getting ratchet wrench back there the rest of them came off easy on both sides this is the only bolt remaining on both sides so we're gonna get these out and pull these headers out um on the front bolt on the Passenger side, I was able to get it with a ratchet. That was the easiest way to get that one. The rest of them, ratchet wrench from the top. All right, so we got a jack in the front end of the car up here. We're taking the passenger header out from under the car. Pull all your uh, plugs out, give you a little, a little extra room, and uh, we're like an eighth of an inch off here. I'm just ready for this thing to come out. All right, passenger side is out. It was lodged down there. I use my custom whiskey racing header persuasion tool to get it out. Uh, send me a message. You can buy them for $29.95 plus shipping, or you can go to Harbor Freight and buy them for like $3.99, but I prefer the whiskey racing version. All right, so we got the passenger side header out. You can see down here. It definitely has some holes in it. It's been patched numerous times. And some more patches there. I believe this header's probably been on the car since the late 80s, so... We got almost 40 years out of it, so I guess there's no shame there. Over on the driver's side, this side's a lot tighter. Um, can't move it forward, it's up against the steering box. I did might remove the starter. I loosened the starter, slid it out, but these headers kind of cage the starter. I believe they're headmans. So, uh, I don't know if we're gonna have to undo a motor mount and jack the motor up a bit to get these out, but we're gonna finagle it a little bit more here. Driver side headers out. So is the starter. I can't really say this was fun, but once you made it a three cylinder on that bank of the engine, it was a little easier. I really got tired of uh, wrestling the starter, so I said, you know what, they're getting tossed anyway. I'm just cutting that back pipe. But if you look here, I mean, I think these are more patched than header. So, uh, yeah, definitely overdue. For so this is what we went with. It's Summit Racing ceramic coated, uh, one seven eighths primary, three inch collectors. Um, if you get a set of these, the instructions are in with the gaskets. I didn't think there was any, but there is. Uh, so these install from the bottom. Uh, right now I'm taking the center uh, drag link out uh, to give us some room. So we're gonna get to that and uh, see if we can slide these in. Passenger header is on. It actually wasn't too bad. Um, Took the center drag link off, disconnect the tie rods, pitman arm, idler arm, all that good stuff. Um, it allowed me to slide the header up from the bottom. So I do have a jack under the oil pan. Make sure you have a piece of wood on top of the jack. Jack it up, uh, take this motor mount bolt out, and it'll, the engine will twist over to the driver's side, and that'll give you room to feed it up from the bottom. Um, I was doing this by myself, so I kind of got it up and resting, and then I put a jack stand like under the collector to kind of hold it there so I can get down, reach in, and then pull it up. Uh, with the engine rotated fairly far over, I couldn't get it lined up, so I just started uh, letting the jack down very slowly so the engine would come back towards the fender well here, and then once it hit the perfect spot to get that lined up, we were good to go. Uh, clearance is good. It does not touch the torsion bar. Of course, I got to put the drag length and... Uh, tie rods and stuff back on the only thing i noticed is right here on the front um gee, a huge deal um 
but that's going to need clearance there. There is actually like a factory dent there, which is not big enough. Uh, but we'll have to get, uh, dent that a little more and get that uh, nut on that stud there. Off to the driver's side. All right, so we uh, got spark plugs tightened. We're getting ready to tighten the header, tighten the headers down here. Uh, it says to start in the middle and work your way out. So I did this one first, and then this one. And then I went here to the back, and I realized I didn't have a nut started on that one. And I can't get a nut on once these are tightened down. So I backed these all off, got the nut started. Didn't it, didn't tighten it down enough. If you zoom in a bit here, you can see how it's already up against the primary. So. For the third time, I'm gonna have to loosen these. Second time loosening, third time tightening. Loosen these, and then I'm gonna have to get that started and in pretty good to where it's clear of the primary. Um, I mean, we may end up denting the primary, but if you look there, I think once it gets so tight, it'll clear just fine. Everything's tightened up on the passenger side. Remember that front bolt goes into a water jacket. So you wanna put some sealing on there. We went with uh, Permatex number two. We'll see how that holds up. One thing I'm slightly concerned about that plug right here you can see how close that is to the header till we get a wire over that i don't know if i'm gonna have to ding that down a little bit but uh it's just gonna be a melting plug wire city so moving on i unhooked the driver's side engine mount with the jacket up I'm like man i'm not getting much rotation out of this to make room aha so i'm gonna put a chain on here in case the mount rips there we go gotta take that off all right, so as you can see, this ain't quite on yet. I think I'm gonna have to let the engine down like I did on the other side to get it to fall into place. Uh, but it was pretty easy. Uh, I did have to take the kick down linkage off, but that's what I had to take off. That bolts to the transmission like that. The header was hitting that once I took that off, slid right up. Probably don't wanna lose that. Because if I do, I'll get my wish. I'll put a manual valve body in the car sooner than later. Uh, but this is on. Um, I don't have the starter in. I had the starter on, but I was looking at this and I hope this works. Uh, my old headers, which I believe were headbins, uh, they're really old and uh, rotted as you saw, but this front primary came down right here as opposed to in the back. Uh, these headers, which are the Summit brand ones, kind of give you a window to give you a little starter window there. Uh, so we're gonna see if we can, uh, get the starter in, at least get the bolt started, then we'll drop the engine, put the header on, and uh, I think I'm calling it a day. Hopefully you didn't just stop the video at the last clip and like, oh, I'm gonna try the starter window, because it doesn't work. Uh, even though it looks like it, I'm running a 440 source mini starter, it does not fit down there. So I had to go under the car, I dropped the header back down, uh, I kept like the primary up over like the pitman arm there, the front primary up over the pitman arm, had it at an angle, uh, work the starter in the back. We're gonna go under the car. Here we are under the car. It's like primary tube spaghetti under here. Um, but with that tilted down, I was able to work it back there. You can see how this one comes out. Both of them come out and around. I was able to get the starter up and get the bottom bolt started. And then I pushed the header back up and was able to get it close to the stud. So do not try the stupid window thing. If you're using these headers in a mini starter, uh, put the front primary up over, up that way, and then feed your starter up, get a bolt started. Okay, just as a addendum to the addendum here on the starter install, do like I said, you're going to put your front uh, tube kind of up over the steering box a little bit. Uh, but before you bolt your starter in, you're going to want to put your bolts on, put uh, hook your wires up to the starter. Uh, because I couldn't get them on, uh, especially the back one there, the positive, it would hit the lip of the block. Uh, with the nut and I couldn't get it tight um, So that's just something to keep in mind. So you want to put the header up Get your starter kind of resting in there hook your wires up tighten them put starter in get the bolt started pull your header the rest of the way up put the header on and then you can reach in the um, The little starter window for lack of a better term there uh, through the primaries and tighten everything down If there's three tools I can recommend to make this job easier uh, that would be these three right here, a ratchet wrench, pitman arm puller, and a ball joint separator. It's like 15 bucks at Harbor Freight, uh, I think 10 bucks at Harbor Freight, and uh, not sure how much ratchet wrenches are. I picked up a gear wrench set uh, at uh, Tractor Supply on sale, I think for like 40 bucks or something. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of at that point where I'm, it's worth to spend the money to save yourself the aggravation because a pickle fork and a hammer just wasn't cutting it. Uh, so that's a couple things you can buy to make this job easier. 
With that said, you know, it wasn't that bad of a job. Was it fun? No, not really, uh, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, just remember, pull your drag link, pull your tie rods off. Um, and when you're putting them back on, remember reverse thread. It'll get you every time. Um, but other than that, I really don't have any complaints. Uh, I I really recommend these Summit headers uh, for 500 bucks. They fit, the gaskets work. Um, hardware comes with them if you want uh, to use bolts. Obviously, I had studs, so I had to just buy some nuts at the local store. Not a big deal there. Uh, but no leaks. Uh, using the gaskets provided, like I said, it comes with 3-inch to 2.5-inch uh, reducers. So if you're doing 2.5-inch exhaust, you're all good to go right there. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything bad to say about it. For the price point, they're awesome. So, I mean, uh, compared to, like, TTI coming in at almost 1200 bucks for a set, uh, I was able to buy the headers, uh, change the water pump, uh, buy some carb rebuild kits, um, and probably come in under budget for what just the headers would cost. I'm not saying TTI is not a great project, uh, product, but... Hey, sometimes you got to save money where you can. Uh, we'll see how these uh, hold up. But initially, I am very happy with these. I recommend them. And uh, I hope this uh, video helped you uh, get some headers on your Mopar. So obviously, the 70 Challenger, it's an E-body. Uh, these headers fit B and E-bodies. I believe 66 and up B-bodies. Could be wrong. 66, 74, I think. Uh, but it would be the same process if you're working on a B-body. You know, drop out the... Um, the Pittman, um, the center link, uh, Pittman arm, idler arm, all that, take that stuff off, uh, and then jack the motor up on each side, get your headers in, put it back down, and you're good to go, and you'll be out making some cool noises with your big block Mopar. So as always, thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Hopefully I uh, start making some more videos here. It's been a minute. So thanks for everybody that's, uh, that's watching this, stuck around, and uh, maybe I'll see you at the exhaust shop because this thing's still open header. Kind of like it. Later.